Hi everyone, it's Ardeth. Thanks for stopping by. Today I have a card where I was just playing around with some of my new and older Concord and Ninth stamps and dies. I started with the polka dot turnabout. These little polka dots are going to be the ornaments on my tree. I got out my original size Misty, which is what you need with a big stamp like this, and I keep my turnabout jig behind the mouse pad, so I just got that out as well. This jig helps you keep track of your turns as well as allowing you to position your panel in whatever part of the jig you want. I chose the center, although it probably doesn't matter with this pattern, which is very regular. I placed the stamp down and then lifted it with the misty door and started with my lightest ink, Limoncello, which is a light yellow from Catherine Pooler Designs. I stamped it twice to make sure the yellow was vibrant and then I cleaned and dried the stamp before my next color. One of the great things about Catherine's inks is that once you clean the stamp, you won't get a transfer of color to the next color. I also dry the stamp because I find when I use the stamp several times in a row, it can start to hold on to the moisture from my baby wipe and then transfer it back onto my panel. Be Mine is my next color, a nice bright pink, and I turned the jig once clockwise. The jig has numbers written right on the corner so you can tell how many times you've turned, or if you're forgetful like me, you can tell if you've already turned it before you inked it up. I moved on to Rock and Red, and finally Fiesta Blue. I really like how the pattern looks even when it's not fully stamped, so that's a great way to get more out of this background stamp. You can stamp it once, twice, or three times, or all four to get different looks. Once I had my four colors stamped, I started over at turn one and I stamped all four turns with WOW Embossing Ink, which is a sticky, slow drying ink that will hold on to the embossing powder. I'm using clear embossing powder so that my ornaments will stay their true colors even after I blend some green ink over top to make my tree. I pour the powder over the panel and then tap off the excess. I always find full panel embossing a little trickier because I'm trying not to get my fingers into the powder on the edges. This is not my most graceful moment ever. I place the panel into a shoebox lid that I've lined with aluminum foil and I wait for my heat gun to heat up. I've used this lid idea for many years and it helps save my fingers from burning, especially with full panel embossing, and I think that the heat reflects back from the foil and helps to reduce warping and melting time. Here's my panel, and I can feel the little bumps all over so I know the powder is melted. And now I'm going to blend Lime Ricky ink over the whole thing with a life-changing blender brush. I'm doing my blending on a Tim Holtz glass media mat. I just got the left-handed travel size, and I do like having the smaller area on my desk. I didn't really mind about left or right-handed, I just used to put my larger one on my desk upside down so that the white areas were on my left, but now there's a left-handed option, I thought why not? I let the lime ricky fade out a bit toward the center of the tree to create a bit of a glow, and I didn't worry too much about it being absolutely perfectly smooth. Christmas trees do have a lot of texture and variation. When I finished the ink blending, I wiped off any ink that was sitting on top of the little ornaments, and I could easily see that I had made a mistake somewhere in my stamping with the embossing ink. My yellow ornaments seemed to have a little white hat on each of them, so I obviously didn't have the jig right in the corner of my misty. It's a little mistake, but not big enough to start over. It'll just add more interest to my tree. I used the Trim the Tree die with my Gemini Junior to create my Christmas tree shape, and then I went back and blended some spruce ink just on the edges to add more depth and dimension to the tree. For my tree topper, I used the Outline Star from the new Silent Night set. I love this simple hand-drawn look. I stamped it on white cardstock with the embossing ink, and then I used clear powder again and my heat gun. This time I didn't use my shoebox lid. It's such a small image and the paper was big enough that I could hold it well away from the heat gun. This powder will resist the limoncello ink that I used direct to paper, and it will give a white outline to my star. I don't have the dies for this set, so I just fussy cut it with my scissors. I made a background for my card, which you can see here, and which I ended up keeping for a different project. But what I'm showing here is that I want to use the white joy as my sentiment. I cut the white letters with the die from the older joy set, and now I'm thinking that I'll inlay them into the tree so I can pop everything up as one layer and it'll all be level. Inlaying die cuts into a shape like this tree is a little different because the joy letters will overhang the edges of the tree, but the principles are the same. I'll link to another inlaid die cut video above if you're interested. 
I placed the die cut onto my tree and I taped it down so it won't shift in my Gemini Junior. When it came out, I kept all the little green bits because some of them will be needed. I used a white solid tree as a backer. This helps me get everything perfectly in place and lined up. I just coat the whole thing with adhesive and then lay the green tree piece on top. Then I put the letters in place. Finally, I find the green pieces that will complete the letters and the tree edges. If you enjoy jigsaw puzzles, you'll be good at this part. Next, I created the background I ended up using on this card. I started by blending rock and red ink all over a panel of white cardstock, again letting it fade out toward the center so that there will be a bit of a glow around the tree. These brushes are really amazing when you blend on a glass mat. There's no harsh lines around the edges of the panel at all. I deepened up the very edges of the panel with rouge ink, which is slightly darker and richer. One thing about the glass mat is that you do need to keep it clean. I used a baby wipe and then dried it with a soft cloth. I just don't want that ink sitting there and then getting into places I don't want it. Then I got out my Misty again, this time with the new Woven Stripes background stamp. This is not a turnabout stamp, but I am going to use the jig anyway. I made sure to center my panel on the jig and I used repositionable adhesive to stick it down. Then I inked up the stamp with rock and red ink and I stamped it down to give a tone on tone look. Then I turned the jig and I stamped it again to create an open plaid. And to finish the card, I just wanted to show you the back of the tree and all the foam tape I used. I like my popped up elements to be really well supported, and you can see I have small strips of tape on the backs of the letters as well as on the tree. I pressed it down near the bottom of the card to leave room for the star topper, and then I placed that and I pressed it down as well. And here's a close up of my little mistake with my yellow ornaments. That's okay. It adds a bit more white to my card and it serves as a gentle reminder that I need to be a little more careful with my Misty stamping. It's only going to work if you put the paper in the correct position. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to my channel for more inspiration. Product links are below and also on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.